So let's start with, with who you are. Give us a little bit of an intro into, into your background. Cool. My name is Justin Kahn. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor here in Silicon Valley. Uh, I started a bunch of companies. Most of them were horrible failures. And um, one of them was pretty successful. It's called Twitch. And then I was a partner at Y Combinator, investing in startups for a couple of years. And more recently, I've started Atrium a couple of years ago. Atrium is a uh, full service law firm for startups that helps startups accelerate their growth by providing fast, transparent, and price predictable legal. And I've been tracking your leadership over the years. And one thing that I've really kind of noticed in the last like year or so, your leadership styles changed a lot. And I wanna, and I thought your tweet this morning was really interesting. You tweeted about, it was something along the lines of cautioning people about delaying their happiness. It's really easy for people to kind of set these expectations or set a bar in the future in which they're going to be happy. I'd love to hear you speak to that. Yeah, I think in our modern society in general and here in Silicon Valley specifically, people are always creating future goals for themselves, which can be a good thing uh, or it can serve them. Um, but with those future goals, they often uh, def defer their happiness. They say like, if I just achieve this thing, you know, if I get into a great school or get a good job that I want, or I start a startup or my startup is successful or my startup raises you know, a billion dollars in capital, then I'll finally have made it. And uh, I think that's unhealthy in a bunch of ways and leads to pe people, you know, kind of creating these systems where they torture themselves every day, worrying about whether they're going to achieve that outcome, which they don't really control actually. And instead of uh, you know being present in their life, I know that was my experience, anyways. So you know, there's a, a, a lot of kind of backlash in Silicon Valley right now around churn and burn, uh, the whole churn and burn culture. Alexis Swahanian talks about hustle porn. Is there still no room for ambition? Uh, I think this is orthogonal to ambition. I think you can have goals and you can have a preference for achievement and for creating something different in the world uh, without torturing yourself every day or imagining that you will be happier if you do achieve it. Mm -hmm. So I think they're actually orthogonal. I also think it's actually different from hustle porn. Like this attitude, the attitude of saying, hey, I, um, you know, I'm going to focus on the present and be present and focus on how I feel at this moment uh, doesn't mean you don't work hard. I want to be sure that people don't think that I'm saying you shouldn't work hard because if you want to achieve something great, you probably have to work hard. But I am saying that you should focus on being happy in the present uh, and not deferring uh, your life or something in the future that may or may not happen. So how do you square that with what you're saying about the, 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 the paradox of delayed happiness? You know, some people might say, well, Justin, it's easy for you to say because you've already sold a company for a billion dollars. You're already really wealthy. Yeah. You've absolutely crushed it in Silicon Valley. You've already done the thing that people move here from all over the world to try and do. And now you're saying, hey, you know, there's no happiness at the end of the rainbow. Be happy now. That's easy for you to say, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think I'm somebody who knows, at least from my own experience. I have one data point, right, which is to say, well, it turns out that achievement has never provided long-term lasting happiness for me. And in my experience with the people who I see around me who are also very successful, you know, people who have created companies that are billion dollar companies or tens of billion dollars of companies even, you know, I don't think that they got any happier from my observation uh, after they achieved it, not in any sustainable way. Instead, I've seen people become happier and more peaceful in their lives through what's happening in the internal world, like in the introvert world, not what's happening in the extrovert world or outside them. Um, so I guess I feel that I have some evidence. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, I can totally understand people out there who are saying, well, that's easy for you to say. They'll have to discover that lesson on their own. Yeah. So, so wealth does solve some problems, right? Which problems does it solve and which problems does it not solve? There's a certain amount of money where you don't have to worry about um, like core necessities, right? Like taking care of your family, security, housing, stuff like that. I think that is a good amount of money to have for sure. After that, I am not convinced that it solves any problems. Uh, I think that there is an infinite, money is just a number and human beings are not capable of like understanding big numbers. 
um, or what they mean. And there's a natural tendency for most people to want to accumulate. I think that there's a endless amount of goals or like new goals you can set at increasingly greater and greater order of magnitudes. And I don't think there's very much marginal utility from achievement in that axis, along that axis. So after you made that first million, you noticed that your, your thinking changed, then the bar just... Went up. I was like, I want to make a hundred million. I remember first I made a million dollars and then I was like, oh, I should make a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. That's like useless. I mean, it's not useless. It's a goal, like, but it doesn't really, I think the idea that that would be like some magic number that I would be, have security and approval and control if I just hit that number is an illusion. Mm. Yeah. Talk more about the illusion. I want to hear you. I want to hear you unpack that a little bit more. Yeah. So I think the reason that people want to achieve fame and success and make money, both in Silicon Valley, but everywhere else in the world is because they want, they think that it will deliver them something, right? And the things that usually they think they will, it will deliver, really speaking from my own experience, the things I thought it would deliver are approval, right? I've always looked for the approval of other people. Um, I've always wanted uh, the approval of, of other people around me. Mm -hmm. um, Security, right? Like you have enough to be able to feed yourself, et cetera, and control of your surroundings. But it really is important uh, to realize that you really need to be the source of your own approval, control, and security. For me, approval was kind of the major driver. And so if I, um, you know, I kept trying to throw more and more success uh, and money into this like hole in my heart and, and fill it with like more material wealth or ex external success factors. It never filled up, right? Like I always felt like I needed more approval from other people. So like really what helped me was flipping the script and really focusing on myself and figuring out how to become the, the, the source of my own approval. And that's when I really found a lot more peace in my life. So you, not, not too long ago, you raised a big round from Andrews and Horowitz. You now have well over 100 employees, right? You're the CEO. Do you still work hard? Yeah, I think I work hard. I think I work hard. Um, but I also think I work smarter. And um, I put constraints on it so that I have a balance um, that makes me more able to be fulfilled in the present. So an example would be I meditate every morning and don't try, I try really hard not to compromise on that. And I will try to exercise every day, try hard not to compromise on that. But you know, the other day I, we did a conference up in Vancouver and um, I woke up at 3 a.m. so I could fly there that day, you know, and uh, do, you know, the series of presentations and stuff like that. So to me, is that working hard? I don't know, it's in my zone of genius, so I feel like it's fun. I, I love presenting. Um, but I'm still willing to like do things that are like inconvenient to try to move the ball forward for Atrium. But at the same time, I want to build constraints in so that I, I can have balance. Um, so that morning I woke up at 3 a.m. actually so I could get my exercise in. Let's talk about the Feeling Good program that you created and the, the recent post that you made to, on, on Medium and how you're, how you're seeing how that is going to affect your leadership and how you're working with your employees at Atrium. Sure. So uh, I wrote this post. I basically, I wrote this Google Doc of all the things that I was doing to make myself um, improve my baseline happiness. So I uh, kind of came out of that stressful situation. I was like, I need to do something. So I started meditating every day uh, for 40 minutes. I started exercising every day, uh, quit drinking alcohol. Um, and then there's like a bunch of other things. So I wanted to, I'm like an evangelist personality. I always like talk about the things I'm doing. So I wanted to put them into a doc so I could share it with my friends who I was, you know, telling about all these these things I've been I've been working on for myself. So I put them in the doc, and then eventually someone encouraged me to post on on my blog. So I put it on my, my blog, and I think it's really resonated uh, with people because you know people are out there saying, "Hey, I was you know I I was promised like if if I just achieved all these things, I'd be happy," and then they achieve them or some of them, and then they're not any happier. And I think there's there's a hole that people are looking for. Um, to like really find fulfillment. And so um, really this is my, just like the things that work for me. I didn't invent them actually, they're mostly aggregated from other um, programs and, and uh, things I've learned. So, uh, but I think it's been helpful to people to see. You've used coaching for your team. I'd love to hear from you, like what has it changed? 
Yeah, so I think coaching is really important. I think, um, you know, we, I mean, just very practically here in Silicon Valley, you have a lot of young people. Uh, they, if you're in a startup, it's often the startup grows really fast, so their responsibilities might grow really quickly um, outside in an outsized way compared to like other companies that they might join in the you know traditional industries. And so they're thrust into these management or leadership positions, and unfortunately, there's no like companies don't really focus on skill building in those areas, right? It's kind of like you you get this management or leadership position because uh, you have functional skills, right? You were really good at sales or really good at programming or whatever, and then you're thrust in this leadership position and then it's like, okay, figure it out. Uh, and they might give you a copy of Andy Grove's book or something like that, which is great, a great book, you know, high output management. But there's, you know, it's kind of like reading a book about tennis and then trying to be like a tennis player. Well, you know, it helps to have someone who's a coach who can help correct you in real time and uh, talk about, you know, the what what your areas of improvement are and where you need to um, level up. And I just think that's like super important for any skill you want to learn, you know, um, and management and leadership are skills. And at HM, you all use Torch. What are the ways that Torch has helped you guys? Um, well, I think it's just a really easy way to onboard, you know, a lot of your team onto coaching. So that's really good. I think you've done a great job of curating the selection of coaches and, um, you know, I've personally learned a lot from the people I've worked with. So those are some of the things. It's really helpful here. And, you know, it's part of the part of the mission for us is it, we're trying to build the venture back startup as well. And it's, we're it, it's a very exciting mission to also to be able to align, align business objectives with something sure. that we believe has a really positive impact. And there's been a couple of employees that I think that we've really touched at Atrium. And so for us, it's extremely validating to have a business that's working, but also to register the impact that we're having 